Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. Hello, this is Chris Parker, and we are back with Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere and Eric Jan Bivonk. Welcome, coming in from Amsterdam. And I've known Eric for well, many, many years. Um, you, we met at Hard Rock Cafe, I think, where chicken wing. having chicken wings and your sister worked with me and you ended up making um, what we think is the, the first, at least your agency at that time, the first mobile app for fleets, managers and mobility in, in Europe. And um, that company back in the day, um, the purpose of that company was, was uh, doing fat shit creating fat shit so uh, hopefully yes. we get into that so eric can you um introduce yourself please and tell us who you are or what do you do and and most importantly why do you do what you do uh oh my all right so i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try well you already know my my name now um there's a couple of things i would like to uh, i think share with you so i was born in the netherlands and raised abroad uh I've become a modern nomad, uh, thanks to that. Um, uh, I live in Amsterdam, and, and with a particular reason. I think um, as Amsterdam is ranked among the most um, culturally diverse cities in the world, um, and so in Amsterdam, I feel the cosmopolitan atmosphere that I like so much when I'm traveling. So um, mm. I walk out, and I get a sense of uh, multi culturism uh, that inspires me um, so um, I'm a sports enthusiast as well um, and, and deeply interested in, in, in what drives people um, for many for many reasons um, yeah I'm trying to sort of uh, uh, understand why on an individual level people make choices and how that reflects um, particular group think or group behavior Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. That's 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 most mostly me. Uh, oh yeah, I'm a beekeeper. So I'm I'm also into nature now. Um, I do not hug trees, but I really dislike people uh, chopping them down. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 uh, my my um, uh, thinking around that has become stronger. So yeah. so actually trying to sort of. Uh, see what I can do around that anyway. So, so these kind of things and um, uh, talking about, about purpose, um, what drives me, um, uh, and that's the sort of a question that, I, that I've been walking around with for, for quite some time now. I, I don't really know, but it has to do with um, uh, helping others and creating individual freedom. Mm -hmm. So through one achieve the other, I think. So it's outward and inward. Um, and why, is and that, why is that important to you? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, it just, I feel very energized after a meeting with someone and then understanding or getting a feeling that uh, I just helped the other to sort of um, hmm. you know, overcome uh, uh, thoughts or fears or anx uh, anxieties and fears. Um, basically the same, but um, to sort of plant a new seed um, for their future thinking and for their activities. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what triggers me. So it could also be within organizations um, when it comes to, for instance, uh, digital transformation. People have a sort of um, uh, thinking around that, but no, it's most likely and it was embedded in old thinking. Uh, and why not sort of try to take that out of that old thinking into a new new approach or something yeah. or new so so these kind of things i like yeah so it's helping others um and through that creating individual freedom yeah nice and and the three sort of areas that come to my mind that i that i know you've been involved in is you you had a sort of a, a mobile app you know digital um agency in the past which i think you're still a shareholder of and you're also involved in new initiatives um one of one, at least is in, in the VR and education space, yeah. which is super, super cool. Um, 
and you also sometimes help corporates with their digital and mobile strategies. And um, can you can you summarize a little bit about the the, the red thread through all of that, and, and maybe dive in into any one of those and share what you're doing? Yeah. Um, um, well, yes. I, well, I guess it has to do with the with the with with the purpose again. So. Uh, working within organization, or I used to be, um, uh, like many other people, just um, uh, working at uh, or with a company, uh, not my own, um, and, and after a period of time decided that, you know, working with this company just like that did not allow me to, um, uh, you know, think like I wanted to think and to try what I wanted to try. So the only mm -hmm. way to do that basically was to break free from um, corporate environments and and and, and start an, start my own organization and um, uh, it had to do again with freedom so I think freedom is an important thing um, but you you just can't be free so it has to to, to do so, um, it has to sort of I don't know stick to something else mm -hmm. and that had to do with the the building. Or look, one of the other things that I find very interesting is innovation, right? So uh, digital innovation, everything that has to do with digital. So the the, the uh, approach there um, was to sort of take the digital innovations mobile at that time uh, and to move forward with that and see how we could, uh, as, well, back then just myself and a, a, and, a, and a colleague, to see how we could surprise organizations, but also ourselves continuously in that, mm. that journey um, uh, and that was uh, yeah again helping the other and creating individual freedom but then this in this case it was the organization so mm. and then we grew the organization and and, and, and tried to sort of keep that purpose alive um, and, and we transformed that into building fat shit because uh, yeah mm. that shit and, was and for the international yeah, audience um, fat shit um, spelled P H A T, um, in 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 the, in translated back to Dutch, what does what does fat shit mean to you? Um, so so um, I think uh, it is it is uh, something that is built and that surprises and amazes mm. the other end, so the receiving end, basically. Mm. So yeah. something that they did not expect uh, um, that. That they yeah, were well, surprised in a positive way, so it has positive impact more so than they anticipate. Yeah, and, and I love it because we go back. I don't know, ten years ago, maybe maybe not so long. But say eight years ago, when um, having been a customer of the agency, and then came back and a bit, a bit was a supplier to the agency, and you know, doing some customer experience design work with you. And even back then, I was you know, for me, it was purpose based strategy, purpose based design, and you as the as the partners of that agency you actually wrote down that the purpose of your company was to create that shit you know yes. and, and I, just the fact that you had explicitly written it down and used it as a sort of a guiding light a northern light and it's and it's still part of your dna yeah. i think is awesome i think it's awesome yeah well i think the the the, the funny thing about the the purpose there was i i very specifically know the the, the place where we came up with this particular um, uh, purpose. It was uh, in Cape Town, uh, the partners of the organization, uh, the three of us were having dinner uh, and we had a glass of wine uh, and, and, and we were discussing what we were actually doing and why we were doing it. Um, and and we, had a, we had a hectic debate around it because at first I thought, you know, uh, create fat shit is nice, but you know, no, no corporate organization will ever buy such a thing. Uh, like, what is your purpose? Like, mm. uh, to build fat shit. So, what is fat shit? So, um, and then the other two sort of convinced me in a way that that was the right thing to do, um, mm -hmm. and and then um, I started living it basically. So, yeah, it's. Um, I had to get out of my corporate thinking into more entrepreneurial thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is which is the journey. So, you seem to you seem to get yourself in trouble while drinking over dinner. As I remember, there was a time that we were drinking in an Indian restaurant in London, and um, 
we had just done a, a strategy. Of, of, w w one of the highlights of, of my, you know, career with Lease Plan was actually doing that mobile strategy where where Vivian Meunier, uh, your your agency, yeah. my team, uh, we we created a, an immersive experience. We invited you know commercial people from all over the world from Lease Plan to come in and and. Um, experience the power of mobile applications. And we had my procurement manager, I think in Italy, bought some iPhone threes, because those were the, those, those weren't SIM locked. Yeah. And then, and then we created this sort of adventure that people had to go through and use all the capabilities and then had them present back their ambition for the company, having yeah. used, uh, it was absolutely br brilliant. And when we were, um, when we were celebrating that over Indian, it was lit I wish I still had the napkin. We, we literally sketched out what would the prototype app be based on what we just heard yeah. with that cost. And we basically struck that deal while drinking in an Indian restaurant in London. And, um, yeah. and, then, and then you guys built it. And I, I think parts of that app are still alive in some of the, the, the least plan country mobile apps. It's, it's a yeah, and I think the thinking around it is still is what um, uh, is the foundation for all the, I think, all the lease plan applications. Mm. Well, yeah, maybe, but that's my, my my thinking around it. Yeah, no, so, so yeah, which is cool. I think so. The organization, the purpose, and so on, um, really nice. And and I think the 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 um, you know the the purpose w was or is the soul of the organization. I think uh, we, we got many people in it served as a sort of magnet. And I think the interesting part of that organization or the agency still uh, is um, that it's an environment, a group environment um, where you can collectively work and realize that particular uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, try to sort of figure out what your own or what your individual purpose is and, and if the two align, there's, there's, there's uh, a lot of energy uh, and foundation for, for really cool stuff that will happen in the future. So I think, um, yeah, so purpose, individual purpose, organizational, I mean, the two ideally align and if they don't, mm -hmm. then eventually one will stop or you will go somewhere else. But um, yeah, those were really great times, yeah. Uh, absolutely great times. And I think that's, um, we had a conversation re recently about your superpower. Um, <laughs> and, um, and my superpower, because while yeah. both of us do, you know, coaching and mentoring and, you know, helping people succeed, but, but um, at the moment, we, you know, just before Corona time, uh, and one your assignment with one of the large Dutch corporates is, is getting wrapped up, um, unfortunately, because of the Corona pressure, I think, on them. Um, both of us are, are looking for that, that environment where we can bring our superpower to bear as the next assignment. Yeah. Um, the, 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 uh, the words we came up with are interesting and I'll let you share those in a second. Um, but it, reflecting on the conversation we're having right now, it seems you, you do have this balance of what I tease you about of, of having a captain corporate um, baseline or, 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 yeah. or foundation. And yet there's also this uh, reflective, innovative, challenging um, opening, you know, so you somehow you can, you embody the, the, the maybe the, the operational excellence of, of traditional restrained, constrained corporate, but then somehow open it up. So, yeah. so Eric, what is your superpower? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, well, we, we discussed this yesterday. So, I, I, um, um, so one of the things that, that we came up yesterday was um, uh, fresh ideas, right? So, um, which is interesting. Uh, I think when I come to the table, so we can discuss a lot of things, but I will always try to find uh, an opposite angle of looking at the same issue and to see what comes out of that. So it might be... Uh, uh, I'm not going to try any examples, but the thing right now in this Corona environment is, um, and, and one of the reasons I think many organizations get stuck right now is that in times of fear and many difficulties, uh, the ones we're facing right now, they don't opt for 
the fresh ideas to to challenge or to to sort of um, solve their issues, but they revert to old procedures uh, and 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 old thinking more so than anything else. And that's what I've been experiencing right now. So, um, and I think uh, in these times, fresh ideas um, are are what we need or what yeah. organizations need to sort of um, uh, get through this crisis alive and and to uh, uh, and not get too harmed. But then again, that's just my thinking. But I think my superpower is is the fresh um, the fresh ideas part and and being able to. Um, create a team around that particular fresh idea and, 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 and then transform that into a new process or a new product or a combination of both yeah. and, and see that to um, see that grow to a certain level. Yeah, yeah. and energize it, perhaps yeah. through nice dinners. I don't know. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah. and um, so that fresh ideas, uh, bringing it in, building the team, and, and um, you are also uh, – an expert of many things, so, so a bit of a generalist. What, how do you go through, you know, what is your process, and this is out of, out of my own interest as well, but maybe for the people listening, what is your thought process when you decide what to focus on and decide what to invest your time in? How, how, do, you, how do you go through that decision-making process? It's a good question. It, it's um, one of those things that I've been thinking about a lot. And um, I, I think the main power, driving power, is, is, um, is, is gut feeling uh, combined with um, um, a kind of um, a sense of... Um, possibilities, opportunism or something. I, I, mm -hmm. so it's, I, I see something or I see a couple of things. Um, I combine them. I read a lot. So I, I read all kinds of books, not so much management books, but more as in creative power, creative visualization, all these kind of things. So more the uh, spiritual uh, side of, of, of management lit literature. So not you, do you have an example of a favorite there that we can call uh, out to people? Yeah, I will get to that in a moment. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, not by heart. I, I'm not so good at, at, at yeah. talking. Um, so, but, uh, so more, more that side and, and um, try to visualize um, how things can be. So I can, uh, I can feel what it would be like if things would be a success. So I can mm. work towards that particular feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, a, I'm also, uh, like I just mentioned, a, a beekeeper. Um, when you open up a hive um, and the hive is in, is, is in good condition, what you will notice is that 50,000 or maybe 100,000 bees are working um, like crazy and making a lot of noise, buzzing noise, but are in, in no way... Um, dangerous or paying any attention to you, what they're doing is they're, they're focusing on their specific tasks and, and, and doing that. And, 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 and I don't think we have figured out everything about the beehive yet because, you know, how can 100,000 bees know uh, intuitively what they should be doing? So, but um, I think the visualization that I do or try to do many times, but I need to have a specific mindset uh, around that. Um, is is what what drives me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so it's 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 these two things. Um, Again, I'm I'm triggered by, and I think this is what one of the reasons why why it's all, always interesting to uh, work with you and 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 to, to contribute with with your with your projects is that you have this balance of, of intuition, if you will, as well as as um, a bit of a rational side because you know your your background you 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 actually have a management consulting background. Um, yes. and then, and then, uh, um, a balance into, uh, entrepreneurial running your own, your own agency and then helping companies, you know, truly corporate people like myself actually achieve their goal, you know, like crazy idea of let's, you know, make the first mobile app, you know, for, for Europe. Um, if we can turn the corner a little bit and go into VR training, um, how, 
what, what is that emotion that you're seeing in the future that you're planning backwards into your VR training initiative, which I've experienced myself first time, firsthand, you know, I've had it on. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. What and, what's that? What did you think? Well, I think I was the first person, as usual, to have broken the uh, the system because the first time we went through it didn't work. But it was maybe it was also because my own uh, my my grasp of the Dutch language is is seriously wanting. Ah, right. Um, but to to the 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 well, why don't you tell what the 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 training app is is intended for, and then I will come back and and, and share what I thought about it because. In order for me to share what I thought about it, they need to know what it is. So can yeah. you give a few a few words on what is this VR training app? Yeah, so so the the, uh, the VR training app is, um, is an application or basically a, a, an interactive VR experience. Yeah, better. Um, right, so you, you put on the Google uh, and then you will experience something. And the topic at this point in time is uh, ethnic profiling. Um, and I think profiling, as we all know, is kind of a, a hot topic at, uh, at the moment. And one of the reasons that I feel or I'm, I'm almost convinced, um, but I feel very strongly that um, since there's so much information coming to us on a daily basis, um, uh, that we become numb to a certain extent for all that information. So, mm. um, like... Uh, normal e-learning or just reading papers um, uh, you know, doesn't do the trick anymore, I think, when it comes to uh, the challenge to get something stick in someone's head in very little time. So to be able to do that, we need to upgrade uh, the level of excitement, basically, when you are taught something. Um, and this, this can be done, you know, if by an individual, uh, uh, his or herself, because you really enjoy thinking or talking about the topic. But if that's not the case, and you need to be forced to do something, I mean, as in forced within an organization, or forced because your boss would like to do it, or forced because you, you need the certificate to get to a next level, then um, I think um, uh, we need to sort of um, look at different angles to to get that level of excitement going. And I think VR, virtual reality, uh, you know, having the glasses uh, together with the, the sound and, and perhaps maybe in the future some more additions like uh, wind or smell, um, we can uh, actually sort of um, fool the brain into uh, a, a real environment, real situation. And I think that can that is as exciting as it can get right now. So, and then obviously if you have the, the right quality of the, the, the the video material and the interactiveness in it. So normally it's just a thing that you see from beginning to the end, you push play and that's it. Mm -hmm. But if you're capable of also sort of directing, um, maybe even unknowing, direct the movie or the training in a certain direction, you, know, you, you, you get sucked into the experience even more. And the thing, what we have seen, and it's, it's very powerful, what we have seen is that, you know, People in this uh, uh, field, like the police who are working with it right now, um, is that they're a bit reluctant at, uh, beforehand, but when they put on the glass, you can actually see their, um, their physique change from sort of relaxed, um, as in I'm just here talking to you and so on, into a um, battle-ready, um, um, what do you call that? Um, Uh, yeah, way they they they, sort they appear si uh, situationally alert. Cause the, yes, the, the, yes. Because yeah, not being a police officer, but when I put the go goggles on, and, and the setting was outside of a train station in the Netherlands, and that's a very yeah. common social space in the Netherlands. And then there were all these human things going on: people walking by, some hoodlumist looking people over here of yeah. a certain skin tone or not, and then there's a some shady looking drug dealy thing go or something going on and there's the yeah, owner yeah. Uh, over on on the, the bench and and you, you, you sort of and the, all these things are happening around you and you 
have to look and see what's in the frame. And then basically you're, you're asked to make decisions on, I don't know what the best use of your time is or how to, how to achieve your mission or public safety or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you go up to the loner or you go up to the hoodlum looking people or the drug daily sort of people. Um, but it's a real life situation. Have, yeah, they're yeah. life situations. And it's sort yeah. of a choose yeah. your own adventure, but it's live yeah. and it's immersive. And yeah. it's, um, and, and I'm sure there's something, you know, physiological or, or something going on because, uh, uh, you know, I think your brain re really believes that it is in the situation. Yeah. To some level. So no, but I mean, the, 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 so it's meant as a dialogue starter mm -hmm. and, and it works. So when people put down the glasses, uh, the, the, go the, the goggle, um, I mean, obviously the, the, the training or the Kickstarter for the dialogue is done, but they can't stop talking about it because they mm -hmm. they would like to discuss with you what just happened and why they chose a particular path. Mm -hmm. And I think that by itself is already so much more um, uh, exciting uh, and impactful on an in, uh, individual level than just doing an e-learning and clicking away yeah. at, um, questions and, and looking yeah. at uh, so, 2D images. So I think not only, not only a dialogue of, um, you know, between the participants, because you can have multiple people do it at the same time and talk about why did you make the decision, but maybe also with the instructor or the expert. And w what I really liked about the... Um, because that in itself was already incredible, but then then the data aspect of it as well, that um, you know that the data aspect of course is improving all the time. But then to, to that's a secret, huh? No. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. Never mind. <laughs> no. Yeah. But um, the 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 um, discovering of how you know what percentage of people went in certain directions, and also how yes. long it took them to make decisions that they you know. Um, yeah, uh, it's so, just so data rich to, to discover, okay, well, what are not only what are these biases that we could talk about, because we see them and feel them, but what sort of biases do this, does the data show that you can come back and say, well, did you know that, you know, this also might be true? And that, yeah. I think that that is um, profound. Yeah, so I, I think I think um, it is very much uh, data inspired and human centered or human centered and data inspired. So um, so we've got this first version right now. It's out mm -hmm. there. It was supposed to be a pilot, but you know it was actually too good for a pilot version. So now it's the real life thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, the, the the challenge now is to sort of come up with new versions of the same training, the same mm -hmm. uh, approach um, uh, to to I don't know, tackle more uh, more in depth the ethnic profiling part, yeah. or uh, take into account. Mm -hmm. um, other, other directions, so not topic ethnic profiling, but something else like you know, safety, for instance. Uh, cool. So we've yeah. got about a minute or so left. Can, may, maybe can you can you start to, to close with, and let, let's focus on this VR thing. Um, who who g give me one or two examples of, of perfect use cases or perfect customers for this, and, and how can they get in touch with you? Ah, right. So so um, uh, I think. Um, like uh, sort of Duana customs would be mm -hmm. very interesting for mm -hmm. this particular training approach, like the ethnic profiling, or the, the not ethnic profiling, but profiling as a uh, as a topic would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think um, safety as well, um, safety regulations. So um, uh, uh, dangerous environments. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would visit a premise. Um, with dangerous goods or, or stuff mm. and you need to be taught very mm. quickly, you know, what not to do, what to do. And I think then, you know, for quick learning, repetitive quick learning, uh, yeah. various people uh, and so on, uh, that these, these kind of, um, yeah, cool. uh, that would very much be something that we could, could do. Um, nice. yeah, I, could, and then, yeah. Yeah. I, I could also imagine um, like customer experience design. So if you wanted to have a branded experience, you know, with a human to human experience and train people on how to resolve maybe conflicts in a retail situation or something. But, but Eric, how can people, I, I will post your uh, LinkedIn. Um, yeah. is, there any, is there another way that people can, can uh, reach out to you? Uh, yes, they can send, um, obviously, email to uh, ericjan at scopic.nl. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, well done. Uh
Learn more at ebillion.com slash podcast.